and welcome back to Central Valley Talk. I'm your host, Lauren Baker. We're cutting back to a business portion of our program today, and you're in for a real treat because we're here with Hans Berger, who is a publisher and author, and he's here to talk about his great book, A Bridge to Cross, which, which we have right here that he brought in to share with us today. So welcome, Hans. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. We love having authors here at Central Valley Talk. Anyway, um, I wrote the book some time back, not very long ago, uh, about uh, to honor my mother because she was a central figure in this whole thing in World War II. It's been a long time ago, but uh, nobody ever honored her, and I'm here to honor her for what she did. She almost sacrificed her life for us four little kids. I was two years old. My sisters were four, seven, and nine. And we lived in beautiful, romantic Heidelberg, Germany. Ever heard of Heidelberg? I think so. Everybody, most everybody has. It's a wonderful place. My mom made a mistake, a big mistake. She spoke out against Hitler. We were not Jewish, which is the Jews were, you know, the prime target, but uh, anybody else spoke against Hitler, they were, they were going after you. And one night, uh, a friend of my mother's came to our place, said, Mrs. Berger, you got one hour to leave because they are on the way to arrest you. That meant death. So my dad, who worked at the hospital, he took care of injured soldiers from all over the world, Americans, Germans, whatever, and they, they needed him. So they weren't focusing on him. So my dad took us to the train station. <clears throat> there was a troop train going to the east, to the Russian front. So he knew we were going to the war zone. He figured he'd never see us again. Now, I can't even imagine um, losing four kids and his wife. How terrible that must have been. And we ended up in Berlin, where her dad was. And we figured we have safety at his place. Well, we were mistaken, because he was a Nazi which we, my mother didn't know, and uh, at one point she, he threatened to have her, hand her over to the Gestapo, the, the bad guys. So we had no choice but to leave there. So my mom uh, packed us up, us four little kids. This is the diagram right here I drew. This is my diagram. Us four kids and a little cart. We uh, walked about 200 kilometers. That's about 160, 70 miles to the, Rus to the Polish border. At that particular point, in <clears throat> October 44, the Russian troops came across the border, wave after wave, a couple hundred thousand troops with tanks. And it was a picture of, it's a picture of calamity. It was horrible, okay? Um, it was a tidal wave of murder, destruction, rape, you name it, it was bad. And we, and we were in that situation for over a year, about a year and a half, and there was no way out because there were Russians everywhere you turned, and there were a threat my mother almost got, she got stabbed, she almost got shot. Uh, we walked through minefields, battlefields. Us kids, we never had one scar on our heads. There were times where uh, there were uh, angels in this book. The Russian soldiers in uniform, they were actually angels that came out of nowhere. Can't explain it, there was no way out. And that's how we made it back to Heidelberg to see my dad. In one instance, <clears throat> we were traveling, and they, my mom was pulling a sled at that time because it was very cold, there was a blizzard. I was sitting on top of the sled, and um, as we went along, a couple of four, few uh, kilometers, five, ten kilometers, my oldest sister, Rizal, she looked back, and I wasn't on the sled anymore. <clears throat> so they have no idea how far back they lost me. They looked around, I wasn't anywhere near. So they backtracked, my mother didn't know which way to go, left or right. There was no, uh, there was nothing there. Everything was destroyed, no trees, nothing. So she went left instead of right, and there was a little bump ahead, and uh, she figured it was a tree stump or fallen soldiers because it wasn't a battle zone. They was fighting all around. And uh, it was me buried almost up to my neck in snow. They found me, thank, they pulled me out at that particular time. That was one time almost, I mean, it was getting it was close. And uh, it was Arctic air in 44 October. It was so cold, it was during the Battle of the Bulge. It was like uh, 30 to 40 below zero. We almost starved to death. We almost lost our lives to malnutrition, um, uh, disease, um, all kinds of things happened. But at the time we needed, there was somebody there to help us out. And every day was the same. There was no home, no food, no medical care. Every night, my mom didn't know where we were going to stay. 
I can't even imagine for one second a mother with four little kids walking around trying to find a place to stay. And where you stayed, that was always subject to the Russians coming and, and causing all kinds of problems, okay? So um, it, it, was, it was terrible times. And if it had been for the United States, America, I wouldn't be here today. Thank you, America, for rescuing us. <laughs> we came across the border. The reason I called, it's called a bridge to cross. <clears throat> we had to cross the Odenizer River, which is the border between Poland and Germany. And there were hundreds of thousands of refugees lining up to get across to the American side. The Russians didn't care. I mean, they were dying like f flies, you know, uh, malnutrition diseases. Uh, there were 20 or 30,000 people, uh, no, 100,000, 200,000 people lined up to cross. Nobody got across. My mother, she had a lot of guts. She took our little wagon and walked all the way up to the river. And people were hassling her, what are you doing, lady? Get back where you're supposed to be. Because had we lined up back there, we would have never made it. We would have died. She walked all to, to the front where the river was. And then there was a three-story building. And a Russian general waved her to come up. My mother was a nice-looking gal. I should have brought her picture. And he asked her to come up and see him. We had, didn't have very good experience with the Russians prior to this, OK? Uh, so she walked up the thri three flights of stairs, and uh, he handed her a pass to cross the river. So she came down, picked us kids up. We walked towards the river and almost caused a riot because nobody else crossed. So the Russian soldiers protected us going towards the bridge because they didn't know what was going to happen. We walked across the bridge. We were the only ones out of hundreds of thousands of people. That general was an angel. We got across, my mom got on her knees and thanked God. And the Americans welcomed us. It's an amazing story. So it's quite a story. Um, I uh, go to all the events I can. Uh, we just came from Bass Lake. I had a craft fair. It was very, very good. I go to the Three Sisters Boutique show every uh, um, Second Saturday of the month, it's on the Academy in Shaw. Also, um, Clovis Farmer's Market, I, I'm there every time. About four times during the, the event, during the time, Farmer's Market time. And also, you can get it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Smashwords, Goodreads, um, Libri. It's all over the social media. Yeah, that's awesome. Where can people find this book if they're interested in reading it? Uh, on Amazon. Get on Amazon. My name is Hans, H A N S B E R G E R. You find me, it's just type in Hans Berger, a bridge to cross. It'll get you right in. You can order a, uh, either Kindle or the soft cover book. Well, that's cool. So it's, you can also get like the digital version. It doesn't have to be the hard or the soft version. No, no, <laughs> Kindle. Uh, any store can get it, can get it for you. Any store you walk in, they can get it for you. Oh, that's really cool. Live within two or three days if they don't stock it. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing this with us because, I mean, it's such an honor for you to share something that's so personal with everyone in honor of your mother, especially. It was tough to, to write. You know, it took me a long time. I started writing and I put away a little, it's just too much. And then started writing, put it away, and then finally started it and, and snowballed, you know. But it was very, very difficult. And if I, and if by accident, I ran into my mother's word journal. Oh. I did not know she had one. I just opened a book and there it was. I couldn't believe what I was reading. It was a lot worse than I thought it was. It's just, we're fortunate, I'm fortunate to be, how we survived, it's unbelievable. My, my dad didn't see us for a year and a half. He figured he'd never see us again. There was no phone conversation because there's no phones. So he figured he'd never see us. And when we got back to Heidelberg, my mom called him, there was silence on the phone. Nothing for about a minute. So that's the book. And then how I survived the German schools when I was a kid. They yeah, were like the military. How I survived the American schools. I couldn't speak one word of English. That's another battle I went through. How I survived the U.S. Navy. My English wasn't very good at that time, <laughs> but I learned real quick. So I, I served in the American U.S. Navy, and it was a, the best time of my life. Is that in the story, too? It's all in there. Do you have plans to maybe write other stories? Yes, I got another book I'm writing. I'm halfway through. Ooh, are we allowed to ask you like what it's about, or is it a secret? It's a sequence after I got out of the Navy. Okay. It's fiction, but 90% uh, true. Mm. All the things that happened. 
Interesting. I love stories like that, so that's intriguing for me. <laughs> can you tell us again how people can get a hold of this book before we go out so that they can check it out? And again, it looks like this if you're searching for it online. It's got a beautiful painted cover. It's a bridge across right there. Author's name, Hans Berger. But can you go over one more time how people can find it? Okay, you can find me on email. My uh, email address is Hans. H A N S B E R G E R 5721 at yahoo.com. My phone number is 559 299 I'd be happy to get your book or direct you to a place where you can get it if you're out of town or another state somewhere. Uh, it's all over the United States. Um, I sold my book in Ohio and Texas, Pennsylvania. It's all over the place. That's so cool. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. We love having you. We hope you'll come back to promote your next book with us as you well. Betcha. You bet. <laughs> it would be a pleasure. We love it. Thank you so much. Um, stay right here on Central Valley Talk. We'll be right back with another continuation of The Wedding Show right here on centralvalleytalk.com.